All right, so in this video, we're going to learn how to work with the data sets from Hugging Face, and we're even going to create our own data set in Hugging Face and push it to our own account in the Hugging Face Hub. And so we're gonna actually make a contribution today. And so let's go ahead and install Transformers and Torch, as well as data sets. And so we wanna make sure that we have data sets installed so that we can access data sets straight from Hugging Face. And this is going to take a second to install, but it'll get there. And so that's done. So Hooking Face allows for us to load a data set in just by calling load data set and then giving the, the path to the data set. And so you can go under data sets and look this one up. And so I'm going to load it in right here. And you can see that it returns a data set dict object that contains a train set, which is a, has a data set that has these two features, an act and a prompt, and then the number of rows. Every data set in Huggy Face is a data set dict object. And so we, we load it in as such. And you can operate on it just like you do any other dictionary. It's just a Hugging Face specific one. And so this one only has a train set. Not all data sets have a, um, a just a train set and they, they, some have train validation and tests like we'll see below and so we're going to load in the Samsung da data set this is a summarization data set and before we do that some data sets actually require for us to pip install packages and so just be aware that working with Hugging Face you have different data sets and they all have different requirements and so let's load this one in and it may take a second and so you can see it has a train test and validation split and it has different features and so I definitely want to show you that not all data sets come as just train some come as validation as well but nonetheless we're going to work with this data set okay for the data pre-processing section of this notebook we're going to do some pre-processing on this data set because we, we wanted to have you know a, a test set as well and we want to change it just a little bit maybe and so, like I said, you can access it just like a dictionary by just calling data set and then, and then indexing into train right here and then indexing into the first example to print out that first example. And as you can see, it says act Linux terminal. And then it's going to give you a prompt, like I want you to act as a Linux terminal. And this is what the data set is. There's some act and then there's a prompt to prompt GPT to act a certain way. And right here let's just say we want to shuffle this data set up because we're about to create a train and test split so we don't want any natural ordering which i don't think we have to worry about it here but let's just say that we wanted to do something like that we can shuffle it up we set a seed for the random number generator and then after we shuffle we're going to call select and we're going to select the first 100 and so this is what that's going to return and it's just a data set with 100 rows now we want to create a test set as well. So on this data set, I'm going to call train test split with a train size of 0.8 in this random number uh, seed. And here you go. You have a hundred examples because maybe you wanted to have a hundred instead of 150. Uh, you can imagine if you had a thousand examples or tens of thousand examples and you're about to pre-train a model, you would want to have uh, less than that because maybe you don't want the training to take too long and shuffling it allows for you to randomly sample from that data set and so here we go that we're able to to shuffle select a subset and then split it into train and test and that is some basic pre-processing that you'll see uh, we're going to do more when we get to training models but i wanted to cover that at the very least now we're going to create our own data set so this data set right here comes from a machine learning archive that's kind of famous. I know this is cut off and I, and I do apologize, but if you go to this link at the, if you go to the machine learning archive and you look up the Reuters 21578 data set, um, there you're going to see, you're going to land on this page and right here it has under data files. I know it's cut off, so I apologize, but if you inspect it, there's a link here and what you want to do is I want to click on this link. Instead of inspecting it, I want to copy its link address. I'm gonna go over here and I'm just gonna replace that. And this is the link to a the file that contains all the data from Reuters, which is just a bunch of articles from Reuters from a, a long time ago. And we're gonna use it uh, to pull in and create our own data set. 
Now this wget pulls it down into our local directory. So now we have this Reuters file right here. We're then going to untar it and decompress it because it is a tar.gz. And it's going to open up the file and we have all this data. The only files we care about are these .sgm. They are the files that contain the articles. And inside those articles, we have to access them using beautiful soup since they're .sgm. And this code right here just goes through and for each article, it pulls out a title and a body, and then it appends it to the, this master list of Reuters articles. And it actually goes through them fairly quickly, so you don't have to wait for too long. Okay, so that took a few seconds, right? But nonetheless, it got finished. And this is what the articles look like. Uh, we have, uh, or each dictionary looks like, we have a title, and then we have a body, which gives the body of the article. We have Bahia Cocoa Review, showers continue throughout the week in the Bahia Cocoa Zone, and these are the titles and the articles. And we can see that we have 21,578, which explains the Reuters 21,578 name to the data set. And that's how many articles we have. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split these into train, valid, and test sets by just, you know, indexing them at 80% and then you know splitting them up accordingly right here because I want my train set to be 80% of the data. This right here is going to save each one of these articles in a JSON-L file, uh, JSON file format. So JSON-L is a JSON file where each line in the data set is a new JSON object and so each one of these is a dictionary right now but it's going to be a JSON object whenever I convert it to JSON right here and then write it to its respective file which is train.json, uh, valid.json, or test.json, right? And so I'm going to get three JSON-L files, train, valid, and test. It's going to contain lines of all the train, valid, and test articles. So data sets, a lot, we, we're, we can actually create a data set from multiple different file formats, CSV, JSON, JSON-L, and right here we're going to use the JSON, which works with JSON-L as well, by giving it this data files dictionary. We're going to call load data set, pass in JSON. We're going to tell it we want, we're loading in JSON files. We're going to pass it in this uh, dictionary that maps which data set, which portion, training, validation, or test of the training data is maps to which file. So we're going to pass that in so it knows which file needs to be validation, test, or training. And then we're going to call that right there and wait just one second and it generated our train validation and test split from those files we just created let's load it back in and this is what our data set looks like we have a train validation and test set data set this is our own custom data set and we can print out the first example as you can see it has a title and a body and then now the cool thing is is let's share it to our own hugging face hub and so Right here, you're going to import Hugging Face Hub. From Hugging Face Hub, you're going to import Notebook Login. You're going to call Notebook Login, and it's going to ask for an access token. At the beginning of this course, I mentioned that we need an access token. Creating an access token is very straightforward. You first need your account. This is the Agenium Academy account right now. You need to go to your profile, which you can access right here by clicking on that. And then once you get here, right, you click to go to Edit Profile, go to Access Tokens, and then click on new token and then create your own token. We're gonna to say Ingenium HF2 because I already have one beforehand, but I'm doing this for the sake of demonstration. Make sure it is a write role, has write role, so that you can actually write to your own repo. And so if you don't have a write role on your access token, you won't be able to write this uh, data set to your repo. And so this, this is our data set. Now we're going to push to our hub Reuters articles, right? And this is going to take a second, but it's going to push it to our Hugging Face hub, and this data set should show up in our hub immediately. And so I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to my account. And as you can see, I've already created this model, but we're going to get to that later. But here we have this data set, Reuters articles, and it's created our own uh, model uh, data set card. And then we can use data sets to load this in, right? Just like that. Now, it may take a second for your data set to show up like this, but give it a few minutes or an hour or so, come back in, and then you'll have your data set shown like this. 
And so that is how we work with data sets. That's some basic functions we can use on data sets and how we can actually create our own. We're gonna do more advanced stuff whenever we start fine tuning our models, but we'll get to that in a later video.